Hey everyone, so I'm back for another one of my studio album profiles and today I'm going to be looking at Led Zeppelin's third album. And the third album was mostly recorded between uh, May and July of 1970. There, there were bits of recording that were done before that as well. But the bulk of the material was recorded at Olympic Studios in London with a couple songs recorded at Island Studios, also in London, Basing Street. And uh, Zeppelin went into the studio in late 69 to get started on a new album after their U.S. tour ended in late 1969. So I think it was like around November or December of 69. They went into Olympic Studios and they recorded Jennings Farm Blues but it just uh, didn't make the cut for the record. There were actually several songs that were recorded during the sessions for the third album that didn't make the cut. Poor Tom was another one of them. Um, I think the Keys to the Highway, uh, the blues that Robert and Jimmy did. Also, Hey, Hey, What Can I Do, which was later, it was issued as uh, a single on the flip side to uh, the Immigrant Song single. Um, and I know there's a couple others that I'm not thinking of right now, but there were several songs that um, just didn't, you know, make the album. I think they had about 16 songs that they recorded in total. So most of it was recorded in sessions from about May to June at Olympic Studios. Right around that time in mid-June, Bonzo got his Green Sparkle kit. So... There's no photographs from the sessions, unlike um, the previous album. There are some photographs of them recording in Olympic Studios and also in various studios in the United States when they were on tour. So with this album, it was um, a, a different approach. With the previous album, they were recording in many different studios on the road while touring, and the schedule was likely pretty hectic. Um, and the vibe of the album is very different on the, the third record because they, they took a much more relaxed approach to recording. They ended up staying at a cottage in Wales. I believe it's the area is called Snowdonia, but I'm not an expert on Wales. Uh, but the cottage is legendary. It's the um, Branyar, I think is how most Americans pronounce it, but I believe it's something like Brana Ayer. Uh, don't quote me on that, though. And I've also heard Plant refer to it as Bran Rar, which means golden breast, I think, the way the sunlight hits the hillside there. That's why it has that name. Anyway, this was a really bucolic place. I don't think there was, like, even electricity or, like, there was, like, pump water. And so it set the tone for the album, which was, a lot more um, acoustic and laid back, leaning a lot more on their folk influences, uh, much less heavy than the, the debut album and the second album especially, which was a very heavy blues record. However, they played some serious blues on the third album, of course, with Since I've Been Loving You and Hats Off to Roy Harper and Keys to the Highway and those, those type things. But in general, the vibe of the album is a lot more low key there's a lot of acoustic numbers and they explore a lot of different sounds and and um, textures with different acoustic instruments like mandolin and banjo and 12 string and so forth so for this for this album profile um this one may go a little quicker because there really isn't as much drumming on the record there are several tunes that don't really feature drums at all uh, there's a couple, the Friends features Bonzo playing on congas, but I'm not going to do a demo on that today. This is going to be strictly the drum parts from the record. So it also features Bonzo um, playing beats that are maybe less distinctive than what we hear in the first and second album. A lot of the things that he plays are a little bit more conventional in some respects, except for Out on the Tiles, which is extremely unique and very distinctively a Bonham beat, no question. But for example, like Celebration Day, it's a pretty straightforward beat. Even the Immigrant Song, it follows the riff, but um, there really isn't a whole lot of fills that Bonzo was playing. 
on the song. It's it's pretty much a straight repetitive drum beat throughout. Since I've been loving you is pretty much a straight up, uh, straightforward blues, and he plays some, of course, beautiful drumming, great fills on it. Uh, but by and large, you know, the parts are not like, for example, Ramble On or What Is It and What Should Never Be, which are pretty specific to the song, um, or Good Times, Bad Times. Uh, I really love this album. It's a pretty different vibe, and it's almost like a palate cleanser between the second album and then uh, the fourth album. And um, I'm just going to get started doing demos of each song now and talk a little bit about the recording. As I said, the recordings took place in a couple different studios. As far as the drum kit, which I had brought up about the Green Sparkle being uh, delivered and, and used in June of 70, I wonder if he used the Green Sparkle kit in Island Studios when they recorded, I believe they recorded Gallows Pole there and maybe Tangerine, although I'm not sure about that one. Um, but it'd be interesting to know if he was using the Green Sparkle on uh, Gallows Pole, and um, otherwise it was the Maple Thermal Gloss Kit. And again, no photos from the session that are known to exist. At least I couldn't find any, and I've asked around some expert ZEP historians that I know who are good resources for this kind of thing, and, and there are no known photographs. They also did some acoustic recording, I think, at Headley Grange, although I don't think anything... Uh, full band was recorded at Headley Grange. They they mainly use Headley Grange for the first time to rehearse a lot of this material, like That's the Way. And there are some uh, recordings of the band rehearsing Immigrant Song and Out on the Tiles. And it's interesting to hear those tracks in their early stages because Immigrant Song and Out on the Tiles kind of share... A connection at one point you can hear the band starts playing what sounds like the riff to immigrant song but then they go into out on the tiles and that was recorded at Headley Grange but most of the tracking for the album was done at Olympic and at Island so enough talk I'm gonna start doing demos of each song and get things going here so be right back Okay, so the album opens with Immigrant Song, which is such a perfect opener for any record. And Jimmy Page just had a great sense of what tune to use as the opening tune. I mean, when you consider Good Times, Bad Times, and Whole Lot of Love, and now with Immigrant Song, this riff that they hit upon, it's just perfect. And um, the song is basically a beat that Bonzo... It's very rare that Bonzo plays a beat that doesn't change that much. Like, he, he's not the kind of drummer who just plays a strict beat over and over and over. Like, he's typically doing different things with his left hand, ghosting, um, varying the beat a little bit, throwing little fills in here and there. But Immigrant Song is one of the few Zeppelin songs that just pretty much stays consistent throughout, and it's not a very long song. Now, live, he and Jones would get into a lot of really syncopated, broken-up kind of stuff, um, especially under the guitar solo, and that was always really, really fun, really exciting. Um, but in the studio version, they just, he, they just kind of keep it locked down into the groove. And so the groove, um, basically, I'm going to just play the groove, and then I'll talk a little bit about it. So the song begins, of course, like this. Okay, so um, what you have there is another example of Bonzo's playing along with the riff in such a way to give, to accent the, the line. So it's an octave line in the bass and the guitar. Now I think a lot of people make the mistake on this song, and it's not, you know, it's a mistake if you're trying to 
really play what Bonham played or transcribe it. I mean, I think people should play however they really want to play. But if you want to learn the Bonham way of playing this, he's not playing. He's simply playing a ghost note down to the downbeat, like this. And of course, as always, there are ghost notes in there. On this recording, it's somewhat harder to hear all the ghost notes. Um, and the snare sounds a little bit um, almost muffled. So again, this was recorded at Olympic Studios. Um, I wish there were session photos, but undoubtedly he had his thermal gloss kit. Although there's always the very remote chance he used another drum kit like the Black Diamond Pearl kit, but we'll never really know that. And it certainly sounds like he's got an 18-inch giant beat crash, which is what this is, um, because those crashes, they have that nice, long, sort of silvery sustain. And uh, this cymbal definitely has that. But that, that one is just exceptional to me. Like, I almost wonder if they put a little treatment on it or something. So that's basically the groove for the tune. So I'm going to play the groove a little bit more and... Um, slow it down a little bit and I'll also play actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the rehearsal uh, version so when they rehearsed this it was much slower and it has a little bit of like a slinkier vibe to it so I'll just play that beat it's the same beat but it's played a, with a little bit of a different attitude because it's because it's slower so when they were rehearsing it it was something more like this So you can see they started it out a bit slower and then brought it up for the final recording, which I think is much more effective for that riff because it's just such a you know strong riff that it sounds better at the faster tempo. So that's Immigrant Song. So um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next song is Friends on the album, but I'm not going to cover that one because he's playing congas on it and... Um, I just want to keep this related to drum set stuff. So uh, the next song is Celebration Day. This tune has a pretty straightforward driving rock beat, but it's got this kind of unique little thing that Bonzo keeps doing throughout the song, and that is he's playing this uh, like a rough into the cymbal crashes often. And I'm not sure how he was sticking it but I have a feeling that it was either a double right and then a left and a crash so like triplets basically like so if you can see that that's left that's right right left crash and I'll play it at tempo as well but another option is to play left right left crash so then you'd be starting with the left hand like this. So it's either or. So I'm going to play the beat and give an example of this both ways. And I tend to think that he did the, the right hand rough into the left accent and then the crash. Anyway, getting kind of stuck on a minor detail there, but it is a really distinctive feature of this song. And then he plays some really nice little fills throughout the song, especially as it goes on, going out. Um, so, yeah, let's take a look at this one. So that's the right, right, left. Now here's with the left, right, left. Or 
So I think it sounds a little smoother, at least the way I play it, and it feels more natural to me to come off of the hi hat with on with my right hand instead of starting with my left. But Bonzo often did start things with his left hand, so it's possible he did that. And the way the sticking works out is it works out well because you go. But this also works. And that has a little more, I think, of a natural bounce or swing to it. Um, the song for being a straight driving rock tune, again, has that sway. It has like a, even at this tempo, it's not a, a, not a slow tempo tune by any means, but it has like a swing feel to it, the way he plays a lot of these fills. And um, there's a couple fills that incorporate flams that I'll play that really have that kind of feel. So let me um, get into those now. So that's what I want to stress once again is the feeling in the beat has a swing and a funk to it that you don't always find um, when you hear people play covers of this song. And um, when Zeppelin played this song live, they started playing it, I, I think, in 71. Or maybe, yeah, no, it was 71. It had a lot more of a driving. It was a bit faster. It had a lot more of a, like a, a forward motion, aggressive, just pile driving kind of vibe to it and Jones bass was really cranked up and he was just pedaling like real heavy on that one note um, and Bonzo was playing definitely a lot more like open hi-hat and, and, and sort of slamming it kind of like this. You know, it had more of that kind of power. Um, and then as they, as it evolved live, seemed like they got more funky with it. And while they did, it, it ended up having more of like a James Brown kind of, you know, attitude in the way the, the, the beat was played by Jones and Bonham. It had more of this kind of feeling to it. So that's definitely a different attitude for the song um, than this. I'm sure you can all hear and appreciate that. So as the song goes on, he plays some really cool fills. He's got these like little um, flam fills that he plays in the in the middle section.
Okay, so since I've been loving you, um, this is one of my favorite Zeppelin songs ever. And I think that's the case for a lot of people. And I think it's because this song carries so much uh, emotional content and it, it's just, there's so much feeling put into every aspect of the performance. And Bonzo's drumming is no exception. I mean, he plays this song with so much heart and soul. And when they performed it live, it was the same. I mean, he played it a lot more busily in some ways. He played, he would do a lot of double time type of uh, phrasing and fills throughout the song. And then during the guitar solo, he was really active, like kind of playing off of all the stuff that Jimmy Page was firing off. So, but in the studio, it's a much more subdued performance um, for the most part. Uh, it's, it's, you know, simply a long form minor blues. Probably the most famous thing about this song and must be mentioned is Bonzo's squeaky Speed King bass drum pedal. And I have a Speed King that I'm using right now and it was actually rebuilt by a guy who does amazing work. Um, his name is Vince and he's got a company called Vitalizer Drums. So if anyone's interested in getting a Speed King really like completely restored and beautifully customized if you want to have like a custom paint job. I, he did a black gloss paint on the columns and completely cleaned up the, the pedal, the footboard and everything. It just looks like a brand new pedal. Um, check him out. Vitalizer drums. Just uh, Google them. Google and um, he does great work. So anyway, I no longer have a squeak on this pedal, so... I can hear some moans of despair out there. But uh, I have two other Speed Kings, one of which is a bit more squeaky and, and rattly sounding. So they're, you know, they're infamous for that. And um, Bonham's squeaky Speed King was no unique or special thing. That's, uh, there's a lot of recordings of great jazz uh, musicians, great jazz drummers who were playing with squeaky pedals, whether it was a Rogers pedal or a... Slingerland or a Speed King, um, you can hear the pedal squeak. You could also hear the hi-hat pedals squeak on a lot of recordings. Um, so it just happens to be that in this case, I don't know how it was overlooked in the studio, but it's sort of a happy accident because everybody loves the squeaky bass drum pedal. So anyway, um, I want to do a little bit of demo of just the main groove of the song and then maybe a couple of the key fills once again. And again, this song, Bonzo has that elasticity in his time. Bonzo was not a metronomic drummer. It kind of makes me, you know, smile a little bit when people say, or smirk when people say he was a human metronome. Uh, he didn't play like a human metronome. He had, obviously, he had great time and a great, great sense of time in the beat. But his playing is very elastic. And if you set a metronome to it, it would probably drift off uh, pretty quickly, but that's true of, of most anyone like there are very few people who have metronomic time and That in itself shouldn't be an end goal unless you know, that's what you're going for but the the beauty of great drumming and great music in general is That it breathes it has a human quality like a heartbeat It's not going to always be the same distance between the beats same as with, you know, the notes that are being played on the drum set. And Bonham, what he really understood deeply and innately was what the greatest drummers have is that sense of when to push and when to pull. And it's a phrasing thing. And, you know, you can, you can try to teach people that in a technical way, but it really is a felt thing. So the most important thing I would say to being, is being open to it and trying to um, always be mindful of how you're playing with the band, like how you're relating to the bass player, or in this case, the organ, and Jimmy's phrasing. You know, Bonham's way of relating to them was magical. It was, they had that alchemy, you know, that was just like a perfect mix of ingredients to create something golden. And this song, this song is it. I mean, this song has all of that. It has every element that you would want in great music, the soul, the feeling, the, the groove, um, 
the emotional power and dynamics. So there's a lot of dynamics in the way Bonzo plays this. And I'm just going to play a little bit of the beat. And then again, I'm going to play a couple little key uh, figures from the song. But basically, it's just his way of playing a slow blues, you know. So let's um, take a listen to the actual uh, drum beat from the beginning. So right there, I just want to say, when he plays that little figure leading up into the next chord change when he crashes the cymbal, there's a little bit of a pullback there. And that's um, just one example of what I'm talking about. And so just when you listen to the way he plays, be really mindful of how he kind of stretches the beats a little bit here and there. And it's never like real exaggerated. It's, it's very subtle. Let's see, thinking about after the guitar solo, you know, like, I've been crying, and then the, the little breaks, you know. And I don't even think he plays on the breaks. I think the snare drum buzzes because of the organ or, or the speakers in the room where they were recording. I don't think he actually goes, <laughs> I think it sounds like the snare's buzzing. Now, live, he would always play, um, you know, said, I've been crying, and then he would play <laughs> usually a cross stick like that. Just a little break. And then the next figure, of course, is... Let me turn this mic off because it gets kind of loud. Okay, and now the end of the song. Okay, so the last song on side one is Out on the Tiles. And this tune is one of my favorite performances of Bonzo's on a studio record. It's got such a funky beat, and it's got such an unusual beat as well. I mean, the form is kind of unusual because there's this little odd measure, odd beat measure 
at the end of each phrase that makes it almost sound like the record skips. So it's really a cool, unique structure for the song. And it's said that Bonzo came up with this riff. So if he did, um, props to him because it's, it's really a cool and distinctive, highly original sounding riff. To me, it sounds a bit like something John Paul Jones would write. Um, just because of the nature of all the, the intervals and everything. I think Page's writing is definitely a little bit more, um, it's more chordal, you know, and riff-based. And this has got this kind of extended, tricky line. But it's just, you know, such a distinct, a distinctly Bonham tune. And this is, in some respects, the most Bonham-like of all the grooves on this record. Um, whereas... Like I was saying before, there are other records that are somewhat more drum-centric. This record, I don't consider to be so much so that way. However, this song is quintessentially Bonham. So let's um, take a look at the main beat. So that's the main riff now, um, or the main beat under the main riff. Now he plays some um, fast bass drum doubles within that section that I didn't play, but I'm going to break them down a little bit because it's really nothing that's too uncommon, but uh, it sounds like when he finishes that fill coming into the crash, he's playing three bass drum notes, which is actually quite challenging. So let's let's hear what that sounds like. So I'll try to play this a little softer so it doesn't get into this mic too much, but so you've got So that's, and that tempo, that's pretty challenging. And he does that a couple times in the song. Um, and then as the song goes on, uh, we've got these fills at the end when he's writing the when he's on the ride cymbal. And I'll just play through the song a little bit and then start to get into some of these fills and just play you some samples of them.
So those are just some examples of the fills that he plays at the end, which are all signature Bonham fills that you've heard before. One thing he likes to do when he plays like 16th notes or, again, depending on how you look at the tempo, eighth notes, but when he, whenever he plays a fill that's like, he will often play the bass drum on the ands and the hi-hat on the downbeats, so much like the Bonham engine. So for example, like this. And kind of hearkening back to the last video I did, the fills are not real straight. I mean, they are straight, you know, they're, but they've got a little bit of a swing to them. And that's always really important to keep in mind about uh, capturing the bottom sound or the feeling as, as close as possible is to be aware of that swing feeling in the phrasing. You know, it's not strictly um, just like this. More like this. So you may not hear that much of a difference there, but there is a difference, and it's, it's not real dramatic. It's more subtle, but you can definitely feel the difference between the strict eighth notes and the swung eighth notes. So that's out on the tiles. Uh, let's flip the record over and move on to Gallo's Pole. Okay, so next up is Gallo's Pole, an old, old folk song that was adapted by many great folk and blues artists and Bonzo's part on this is similar to Poor Tom which was recorded during the same uh, sessions not the same exact sessions but Poor Tom was recorded at the time of the sessions for the third album so um, and it was never it, it wasn't released until Coda but there's a similarity because all of the uh, stick part is played on the snare drum. This 16th note rhythm with the hi-hats on the downbeats and the bass drum playing all kinds of really pretty intricate uh, footwork on this. And a lot of it is based off of the um, anticipations that um, we sometimes refer to as the Bonham engine, which is hi-hat on downbeats, bass drum on upbeats, and um, left hand, right hand, playing successive 16th notes.
So that's basically the, uh, the, the beat that he plays throughout the whole song. So I'm going to just break it down a little bit quickly. Um, I think that it's fairly clear to see what he's doing at tempo, but I'll do it a little slower now. Okay, next up is another citrus-related song. Uh, we have the Lemon song on the previous album. This is Tangerine. Now, Tangerine is written by Jimmy Page, and the lyrics were written by Pagey, so that's um, somewhat unusual. And it's a holdover from the Yardbirds days, and the treatment that they put on it is so nice. You know, it's just a really beautiful little melody and with all the overlaying guitars and pedal steel guitar and it's a, a really brilliant little piece um, on the album and Bonzo's drumming on this one is fairly straightforward there's really nothing special about it other than you know just the great groove that he plays but um, I'll just demonstrate the beat that he plays it's very very simple actually one of the most simple of Zeppelin uh, of Bonham's drum beats, I think. Okay, so the very last song on the album that features any drumming is Bronyar Stomp. And Bronyar Stomp really is just bass drum and hi-hat. I mean, there's some uh, spoons or maracas like, like this that are overdubbed at, uh, toward the end. And when they played this live, he would play a set of maracas kind of like this um, while playing the bass drum and the hi-hat with a ching ring on it. He would usually have a ching ring on it and step on the hi-hat when he played it live. But in the studio, he was, it sounded like he was using a stick on the hi-hat, like this. And that's basically all there is to the beat. It's just a boom chick, boom chick. And then toward the end, he gets uh, into the into the castanet part, which is kind of like. And I'm doing that very poorly, but that's, you get the idea. So that's the last song that features his drumming on the album. As I said earlier, there were several songs that were recorded during the sessions. I'm not going to go too far into detail on them, but in December of 69, they recorded Jennings Farm Blues, and I believe those were the first sessions for the, for the album. And Jennings Farm Blues is basically, I guess it's a good time to talk about because we just I just talked about Bronyar Stomp. It's basically like an electric version of Bronyar Stomp. And I actually wonder if it existed first. So I'll I'll just play a little bit of that right now so you can hear that beat.
Another song that they recorded during those sessions was Poor Tom. And like Gallows Pole, it's all played on the snare drum. The beat is a bit differently. It follows the, uh, the guitar pattern once again. So here's just a little quick demo of the Poor Tom beat. Okay, and lastly, I think I should talk a little bit about Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? Because this was recorded also during the sessions for Led Zeppelin III, and it was the B-side to the immigrant song Japanese 45 release. This song has a really nice laid-back funk kind of feeling to it, and it really has that swinging feeling as well. Like the way Bonzo was playing the beat and playing his, his fills, um, are really just very relaxed and and have that, that nice sway, that, that swagger, but not in like a real heavy way. So I'm just going to sort of play the groove a little bit and throw in some of these fills, and um, you'll recognize these as being very familiar, but it's just really nice how he incorporates them, especially as the song ends and is, is uh, fading out. So that's Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? And that's going to conclude today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'm really enjoying making these videos and talking about what I love so much about Bonzo's drumming on the studio releases. And I'm looking forward to doing the uh, upcoming fourth album and Houses of the Holy and, and so on. So thanks very much for watching and thank you for subscribing and I'll see you real soon.